the megalogai of Yahweh Lelion Elohim is always alive and powerful sharper than any two-edged sword piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow and it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart all scripture is God breathed and is profitable for doctrine for reproof for correction and for instruction in righteousness a training in righteousness that the man of Lord God might be mature thoroughly furnished unto all good works study to show thyself a prudent to Lord God a workman that needeth not to be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth a very accurately handling this very great unique infallible and inherent great word of truth glory be to my Yahweh Siddhkanu to the highest the only righteous true Lord of our God who shall reign forever and forever and the people have to tremble in his presence the Lord of our God who dwelleth between the cherubims introducing himself to the Old Testament saints but now made us an about in every believer making him to be the Shekinah glory of living sanctuary during the past dispensation the earth would quake in his presence at the Lord and the present Christendom the people among whom he has chosen us to be the Kathab ka- ka- Kainiketesis or in return the scholars re- writing Bible scholars knew of a kind spiritual quality species that's what the word Kathab Kainiketesis Kathab the Hebrew word Kainiketesis is the Greek word. These words have been found Kathab in the Old Testament in Galatians 6, but new creation, he says, that's Ale Kainiketesis. And that word Ale Kainiketesis, we have made Kathab Kainiketesis, making us to be the temple of the living Lord of a God. He has mandated to walk in his precepts to tremble in his presence and to have that which is right and perfect that is Isaiah 66 1 and 2 which teaches to us the Lord God is willing the one who trembles at his word to learn his word to make his word his number one priority and when Lord God is seeking such things why is it we are still counting to be cut off from his presence and think what we are doing is really Lord God's service so to such great Lord of our God be the glory to the highest and peace be unto the mankind on this earth to those who believe the true gospel not the gospel of which any other angel could come and teach to you otherwise as the gospel says for us the good news the good tidings anyone who believes in my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ shall be saved and those who think who are having no hope those who think they are having no life right from the childhood being molested and now they want to end up their life in depressions having for dope addiction drop addiction everything no matter whatever your life status quo may be no matter whatever you may be as a notorious sinner the love of my Christ has come to save the sinners that's the good news and the good news for us is dear brethren you can receive it by faith alone in Christ alone no works have been needed by your part and the word by faith to illustrate that in a very simple example for you having a wire of plug at the other end a light being fixed to it you are putting this plug into the current socket and if you don't on the switch the end of that plug you are having a bulb being kept to be 
glom or to be illuminated. It doesn't come to shine if you don't put on the light. Likewise, fight men to say, dear brethren, you are trusting in Lord God's word and you are operating that force in you. And the divine illumination is the effect. If you don't turn the flag, you don't get the divine illumination. That's as simple as that anyone can understand. Likewise, by faith alone, in Christ alone, we meant to say the saving work of Christ on the law, of the Lord on the cross, is the ultimate solution for everyone to know. Believing as simple as you drink water, as simple as you eat food, you swallow it up. The divine illumination of that effect is nothing but you have a great joy that none can shake you out. In fact, indeed, Romans 8, 32 to 39 teaches to us, not even Christ our Lord our God could separate you out from his love. Those who are really believing with a true repentant heart. The same thing what in Mark 6, 12 they started to preach, the kingdom of repentance to them. Metanoia, change in your attitude of thinking. You have a great regret. Have you changed to look upon the wiser end of your future? And have you changed? You change to say you are being saved by faith alone in Christ alone, not by works lest any man should boast. You have changed to come back to your senses to realize that there is nothing possible with man to achieve his great eternal life which Christ, our Lord of God, has bestowed upon us graciously the unmerited favor upon the sinful mankind under the term called as grace. Change of your thinking to realize that all your good deeds are ministerial clots, not filthy rags, the KJV calls, but the Hebrew says ministerial clots. What the best you can do with your ministerial cloth? Do you want to wash it and keep it with you and you can use it for the second time? The woman knows very well what she's going to do with that menstrual cloth. She's just going to throw it out. The change of thinking will get you to realize it's not by our own way of style that we are introducing our concepts to learn that we are going to earn our eternal life by our good deeds. And that's what religion is all about. A religion comes into play to teach to you. But we are going to get our own activities to stand before the presence of the Lord. Therefore, two books being opened in Revelation chapter 20, verses 11 through 15. The book of works, the book of life. Anyone whose name is not been written in the book of life, by that we meant to say what who haven't believed in my Christ, by faith alone, in Christ alone, who haven't put their plug in the current socket, neither they have on the plug so that they could glow up in the divine illumination because of that great operation of the word of the Lord of our God through the power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. Though we are spiritually dead at the moment of physically born again, after believing gospel, we have been born again. That's what spiritually alive under the operation of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. For you to express your non-meritorious signal, the weak signal that you blip out from your mind, even that demands the operating power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, and that's faith. And the true gospel says, believe or perish. But the love of the Lord of our God has been given so that none to perish, but everyone should come to the thorough knowledge of his glory. Happy Gnosis knowledge of his full well. Therefore, the church, looking upon the time, they should be the communicators of Bible doctrine, not a place for gimmicks, not a place for the way how the churches are run today in this Christless apostasy of Christendom. It certainly pricks our heart how this man they have ruined the church. For what they have ruined, they have ruined it for their own lustful patterns of the olds in nature. That's what Ephesians chapter 2 verses 2 and 3 clearly illuminates to us. What they were, these are the sons of disobedience, apathia, stubbornness. They cannot be persuaded. Why? Because they're operating in the energy of their flesh. They're operating in the energy of their thinking, of mind. Not the divine word of the Lord of God to operate in them. 
And what they come? They come with schemes. What they come? They come with programs. What they come? They come with signs and wonders. Why they come? Because they want to fill up their bellies. These are the enemies of cross. Apostle Paul said long back again, I weepingly tell. These are the enemies of Christ. Because why? They mind earthly things. That's why. They haven't been yet put to death. And you know what is the fate? Revelation 21, 27 teaches to us what is their fate. Dear brethren, faith alone in Christ alone, knowing the word of the Lord of a God, show forth your divine illumination, honor the Lord's word above his name, we shall not be among them who love to trample the word of the Lord of a God under their feet. But rather we should be the people kneeling down in his presence and taking the word of the Lord of a God and honoring his word above his name no matter what, whether the world may be at one end. And they think in the present Christendom the way how they are jumping and dancing and looking upon the way of Christian prosperity blessings examples. And they think that's the divine mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, and whatever they may think as we call them as sheer rat or human excreta, fit for nothing except to drag them out and shoot them out. If Lord God would grant us the permission to look upon the way of these people, they are contrary to the word of the Lord of our God because we cannot go to take the place of the Lord of our God in judging them because Lord God has said, when Janans belongs to me, I will pay them back. But it's our cry to cry out and tell the way how Ezekiel did, the way how Jeremiah did, the way how Isaiah statesman did, the way how men of courage in the past with uncompromising principle did, including Elijah. What a great example we have from him, killing off or or cutting into two pieces those 850 bald prophets, keeping that courage in us. If Lord God would grant us and we could look into the present Christless apostasy, the way how they have been holding up, not knowing the word of the Lord of our God, neither knowing the principle of the power of the word of the Lord of our God, what it is, but rather becoming themselves to become reverends or right reverends or doctorates, which is not at all been found in the Bible. And they want to become bishops and popes, which is not at all been found in the Bible. The only legitimate title given to them under the great spiritual gift of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, which is not even just a pastor, as many people think as a pastor, but it has to be pastor teacher. The original Greek says the copulative conjunction chi, the grand village sharp rule, it's pastor teacher in the original Greek. It's not just some pastors and some teachers, as this idiotic morons have diluted that into fivefold ministry of the Holy Spirit of God. But it is not the fivefold ministry of the Holy Spirit of God, it's the fourfold ministry apostles, prophets. They have done their work. We have now the gift of evangelism, and followed by it, we have the gift of pastor teacher, pastor teacher, pastor teacher. They may ask, What is the office of teacher? The office of teacher is nothing but to teach from Genesis 1 1 to Revelation 20 to 21 word upon word line upon line precept upon precept with proper concept of dispensations with proper understanding of isagogics categories and exegesis and if he could ask if you're an example of my Lord following his footsteps Lord God said I shall not even let go iota upon uh, iota and carrera upon carrera far less we can think we can go back and expound word upon word and do the work of the Lord no not at all Lord God demands even that single dot on that he demands even that single sli sl slight line wherewith you can find the difference between p and r or a small i and a capital i when you find a small i you find a dot on that that's iota that's jot what you can call and teetal is nothing but if you can make a difference between p and r if you find a slight line that slight line is called as teetal these things are most essential in the hebrew whenever we are keeping that points of dots because that could change the entire meaning. And Lord God is intended even to look in those terms because of his great designation given to him in John 1.18 when he says, No man has seen Lord God the Father at any time except his son who came from the bosom of God the Father. He is going to expound to you these things. What is the word for exposition or expounding? That's nothing but exigiomai. In present Christendom, it's not denominations that counts, dear brethren. It's exigiomai. 
the failure of exegesis has led not only to make the people in fact indeed even the people cannot be considered as an innocent ones do you know why because they have everything they are inexcusable in the presence of god the father they should search diligently what is the purpose of their life why they have been kept alive in christ if they don't come to seek as the example we find greatly in exodus chapter 3 and verse number 3 when Moses came to say, please, he says in the Hebrew, please let me go and look. Though I may rebel against you by not keeping this flock, the flock of my father-in-law, I left them behind the mound. I want to go back and look that side. Please let me go. I may come back and pay if the flock has been gone. Someone has taken it, either the lion or a bear. I don't mind, but I want to go back and look. You know, what is the intention of that? Putting yourself fast death to this world. That's the intention of Moses over there. Therefore, when Peter asked, Lord, we left everything and we are following thee, he said, You haven't left anything. Teaching an example in Mark chapter 4, till the seed could die fast, it cannot sprout up. Teaching the example for us as well today in the present Christendom, if you are true believers in my Christ, you come to the church to search, to seek, to knock and to find out your true eternal life which is going to be forever and forever in the terms pertaining to eternity. Not just the temporal things of this earth, the temporal things what you hope for, they are nothing he says, but the things what we hope, having that great absolute confidence, H means Holy Spirit, O means obedience, P means peace, A means eternal life. When we are having such great Holy Spirit obedience, peace of eternal life. When we are having such great hope, the things which the permanent they are, we haven't seen, but we walk by faith, we hope it by faith. And for that cause, if you are not coming and looking and seeking and searching, your right bona fide gifted male spiritual pastor teacher, is he or not? Or is he daily exegeting the word of the Lord of a God or not? And what the principle says for us in Zephaniah 3, 5, without fail, morning by morning, he comes to expound the truth. If that's the principle, then how many pastor teachers are daily teaching the word of the Lord of a God? And if they're failure in teaching the word of the Lord of a God, why will not the church end up in such great misery? Why do you think this bona fide gift has been given to you? To have a respect, to have a clergy dress, to have a dress so that you can be far above than the people because the people are sitting in the pews and you're standing in the podium. Why do you think you have this bona fide gift? You have come here to serve, dear brethren, not to be served. You came here to serve the flock. And this is Lord's flock, the future wife of my Christ. And if you are adorning it not according to the will of God the Father in every aspect, your fate is 2127 of revolution, which we shall look. Sanctify yourselves, dear brethren, to look upon the great pale wonders of this word of the Lord of a God. Rather, looking your life in the terms, when you open up yourself in the mirror of the word of the Lord of a God, you should match his glory. That's the purpose of our inner man. The new man in the terms given to us in Endikai, Suni, Kai, Hosiatis, Thessalatia is to match so that your resurrection body could be applicable for your inner man in the standards of that great righteousness and holiness wherewith the KJV calls, but the Greek says, in the sphere of truth in the terms of the great holiness of Lord God. What is the sphere of truth, knowledge of Bible doctrine? Again, the word for us, word upon word, line upon line, precept upon precept. This is the only principle. The man on this earth doesn't know what the Lord God is all about until and unless it has been revealed for us in the Bible. And if you don't come to cross check your life through the mirror of the word of the Lord of a God and understand and your plan according to the ways of Bible doctrine, then as we read yesterday, there is more bitter for you than that your snares, your nets and your bands. 
the snares what we were persuading yourself to follow after sin after sin and your nets karam the lord of agad said and what are those bands you're behind the prison not only on this earth even in the heaven realm when you come back to be judged at the bema throne of my christ you will realize in the energy of your flesh seeking not the truth rather thinking this is the truth you led a life a life that is quite contrary to the word of the lord of agad and you will be paid back with wood a and subble being burnt because the fire represents the word of the lord of agad anything that is against the word of the lord of agad anything that is not even matching close enough even to the millionth of a millimeter that will not stand in his presence therefore making sure yourself to be under the controlling power of lord god the holy spirit and to know and to learn what lord god the father in heaven has preserved and kept for us on today's date in his spiritual manna we shall take it after this prayer in the privacy of your priesthood in the church age that has been given to you because you have been called as an ambassador you have been called as a king you have been called as a priesthood and this priesthood calls for you to realize that you can confess your sins it is not the popery the greatest evil that could ever occur the christendom the way how they kept the confession rooms that's wrong even in james 1 where many people count confessing your faults as confession of sins one to another that's wrong the bible says confession of faults in the realm what they have deceived you in James and the confession room what the people have made in the Roman Catholicism is what the great thing what we are going to look the reformation of this great protestant in this October 31st the reformation which is nothing but for you all when Martin Luther came with the 95 theses he hit the castle door with a nail and a paper but now in the present Christendom it is not just that 95 theses but the entire 29000 verses in the bible approximately nearing to that number you have to take the entire bible keep in the face of the forehead of the pastor teacher who is there if he doesn't know the importance of teaching this word from genesis 1 1 to revelation 20 to 21 the spiros zodiotos bible to be more specific because it has the strong coded numbers in the terms pertaining to his explanation of the notes including the strong dictionary behind it taking that keyword study bible keeping in the forehead of the pastor it is better for us to anvil him not just to hammer with a nail but to anvil him like the massa burden lord of the lord of a god upon his forehead and he should come to look the present status quo the way have the spoiling my christ flock the way they're foiling spoiling the beauty of my lord's wife in the future and we shall not be the partakers of that better for us to be alone better for us to be isolated the way how we can read in several of the examples in the bible as apostle paul says in romans chapter 16 in verses 17 through 20 any one who doesn't follow this rule depart from such company he said because there is no other rule for you apart from this rule if there is any other rule lord god would reveal he says in philippians 3 but he knows very well there cannot be any other rule the only rule given for the church is the right from the beginning for the sinful man can being made from the day one when adam and eve were been made daily they used to come to learn the word of the lord of god in the hebrew eating you shall eat first if you don't eat the word of the lord of god you are not going to take your physical food that's very simple The same thing what he thought for us in Deuteronomy 4:4 or Deuteronomy 8:3 in Matthew 4:4 or Luke 4:4 he said the remata declarations of pastor teachers wherewith when they have been given this completed canon of scripture you need to come and stand at the door post proverbs 8:34 through 36 day by day and blessed are you when you come to take in the word of the lord of god day by day and you wait upon the door post before the church could open at 6:30 for example you have to stand there by 6 o'clock blessed are they that they love the word of the lord of a god they will be rewarded much he said and they will be the great cherry heart cherish and nourish where with lord god's delight they are performing and every day every day every day the word of the lord of a god has to be taught because the past teachers have failed this great commission of the labor not only in my country india even in and around the client nation which is nothing but for my lord usa we find the people coming out with the great terms as what we call the way how they grow up 
whenever you want to sow the soil for example where I come to my field every day the crop what it was been sown it requires proper care proper lookout if you just live like that do you know what happens to show you an example this is the way how the grass would look like in each and every part and when this grass is growing it doesn't require anyone to take care of it or till it they just come for the pleasure of their life and what for they come for the pleasure of their life we shall continue after this prayer looking upon this concept. Sanctify yourselves to look upon the great pile of wonders of the word of the Lord our God. Infinitely divine Holy Father, the things that are given to us to learn today in the Christendom of today's eternity past spiritual manner, Lord, help us as we go and study these things, so Lord, get the Holy Spirit to teach the truth. Nothing else on this earth we demand, O Lord, than to honor thy word above the name. And if there is an offense between us, Lord Father, lead us in the everlasting truth. In Christ's name we pray, sovereign Lord. Amen. The things pertaining to the way, the way how these people they are coming to have something in their mind. Do you know what for they come? They say that why the churches have been run, when the pews have been filled with these mem members like this grass as an example what we are looking as I've shown you now the grass in my field the field where I come to teach every day the word of the Lord of a God it doesn't require any care it just grows up so the field where I've been possessed with such grass are the way how you can find people that want to fill in the churches with mega structures the people have been counted there like the grass, the grass which grows up, which comes there for boy crazy, girl crazy, they, comes, they come there for the program, they come for a name to say I go to such kind of a big church, but they are going for their own destruction, where there is no word of the Lord of a God, neither where there is proper revolution of the word of the Lord of a God, we find in Proverbs 29, when we read the word where there is no vision that's wrong in the KJV translation, the Hebrew says Kozan, Kozan meant to say revolution, oracle, where there is no proper teaching of the word of the Lord of a God, a proper exposition of the truth in Christ, there the people will perish, and the people where they want to take in the word of the Lord of a God, Lord God said, carry your cross and follow me, then you will be my disciple, and that's the road what he goes, is a very, very straight road, it's a narrow gate, many people love to desire and walk over it, he says, but they cannot, said the Lord, do you know why, because it's very tough for them to come every day, because they don't want to renovate the standards and put up, put to death the old sin nature, and they are already being, as a common one, koinonon, he says, for us in Revolution 21, 27, the origin of that word comes from Miano, and the word Miano meant to say, the human excreta being disposed of in a sealed boxes in the ancient time. The isagogical background says for us that kainono meant to say like in a simple terms human excreta. Why the Bible calls directly you as a human excreta? The one who is being like a human excreta because you don't have the essence of the word of the Lord of a God in you. That's what you do. You go to the churches to say to the pastors giving them huge money and the pastors are always happy to take huge money from you rather than rejecting that money and saying that if you are not being filled with the word of the Lord of a God who the hell seldom cares about your money your money is the root cause for your own destruction when you are not being spiritually prospered or the way when you take the word of the Lord of a God and your soul could be delighted and be useful to the Lord's work if you are not prospering in there if there is no edification in there then why is the point that I need to collect your money they are not worried for that the pastors are not saying those words the pastors are saying now with their programs as well as in each and every nick and corner of this world they are happy to take the tithes when the new testament says when there are no tithes if the rule could be passed down saying to the point no church should collect tithes nearly 99.99 percent of the churches will be locked out do you know why because the pastors are entering now only for the tithes in the churches they're not asking you to give the tithe of your time every day minimum two hours or 40 minutes 
in the day that has been prescribed to you in the grace of the Lord of a God for 24 hours if you are not able to make up your time to give to the Lord of a God back to him 2 hours 40 minutes and we have divided that isn't it we have made 8 hours into 3 parts 8 hours you may sleep 8 hours you may work again the remaining 8 hours you divide into 2 quarters that is 4 hours each spend 4 hours for your time for your food for everything and remaining 4 hours in that solid 4 hours you give at least minimum 3 hours in that you take 1 hour as a break and you can calculate your 24 hours in the terms and you can make up your time to give to the Lord minimum the tithe of your time but the Christendom in the present world though the New Testament doesn't talk about the tithes they are much worried and to talk about the tithes and they emphasize about the tithes and if you believe it or not dear brethren if the churches would come up with a rule when it says there are no tithes and you should not collect tithes minimum 99.99 percent of so-called false pastor teachers will be erased out they could be easily filtered in these terms do you know why they run they run the churches for tithes they run the churches to beg and to brag and to take from them the tithe though the word of the lord of god is enough for us they don't ask according to the standards of bible doctrine which says according to the prosperity in their heart let them give and it doesn't demand you have to give such you have to give much no even in the contrary principle to the word of the Lord of a God as well, dear brethren, just the tithe of your time is not enough. You have to give more than that because the very breath you survive on this earth and to make a thorough understanding of your life on this earth, it demands that you need to pay more than the tithe. In the Old Testament, when they were tithes, do you know what was the principal rule for that they have to pay? Psalms 1 1 says for us in the chapter number 1, those in six verses, meditate upon the word of the Lord of a God day and night. And in the church age, you don't have tithe to pay. And as Lord God prospers your heart to pay, you can give to the church. Then it meant to say, no gap even in the day and night constantly walking in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit constantly marching in the indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit be always praying without ceasing the word says in Colossians in the same terms now always get every thought into captivity for Christ this is what our program is there they were said to meditate day and night in Psalms but now for us every thought you get into captivity for Christ how can you get your thought into captivity for Christ whether is it by the word of the Lord of God or not therefore in 2nd Peter 2 9 he says Lord God knows who are just and how to deliver them out from such temptations but the problem with us is we are not looking in the terms pertaining to Bible doctrine any longer because we don't want to meditate upon the word of the Lord of a God, neither we are seeking for us the medicine to our flesh is the word. In fact, indeed, without eyes, how can you be? It's as good as if you can examine in yourself, take up in your home. If there is no power, there is a power cut. How darkness it would be in the day of night. Just imagine your life in those dark days. How it would be for you. Wouldn't you search and seek your representatives which could be other substitutes for that power? Will you not run for your battery so that you can come back and see? Because you cannot survive in darkness, isn't it? But why you want to keep your inner man in such great darkness without entering the light of the word of the Lord of God for your inner man? Such darkness will constantly lead you to make tithes as number one priority, to make good deeds as number one priority, to go and to do the things pertaining to the way what we can call in the present Christendom as a Christian programs, being comfortable with the pastor. <laughs> Therefore, Ecclesiastes 7, 17 teaches to us, do not be overwise. Why you have why and how you can be overwise? You can be overwise because you are doing the things that are contrary to Bible doctrine. How great you can be overwise because you are thinking your good deeds, because you are thinking how much money I am giving to the church, you are thinking my kids are partaking in the, in, the, in the church programs, thinking that how much God would bless me if I give so much of money, thinking that you are fearing about the words which could be all the time into bad choices, all these things you are thinking in your mind and you are thinking what can Jesus Christ do for you if you come to the church. 
all these things you have been subscribing in your mind why they are not with one mind why they are not able to come to look and to understand the great word of the lord of a god has to be taught for you but rather what they're doing they're daubing you with untempered mortar they are making you to found your life upon sand rather than rock when they have been daubed with untempered mortar you cannot listen to the word any longer you love to look upon cheap substitutes programs and that's how the church deceptions are wolves in the form of sheep. That's how they want to look upon and teach to you programs. That's how they want to consider for you the great apostolic reformation movement. But it's not a movement of apostolic reformation. It's a cult. Where there is no proper revolution of the word of the Lord of a God, when the bona fide gifted pastor teachers, when they are not doing the work of the Lord of a God, there you will find the people to perish. When they have been perished, they will be in a realm of what the word of the Lord of God calls for great apostasy. Who are making this apostasy? Already sheer ruts of teachings have entered into our pulpits. No exegesis, no categorical exposition of the word in the terms of exegesis, no isagogics, no way dispensations. Dispensations is not a denomination, dear brethren. This is what Apostle Paul said, Iconomias, the standards of rules that have been set for the home in this present administration to call or the word dispensation, the church age is very, very far away and it's very, very unique as compared to the two advents of my Christ being sandwiched in the past as well as in the future. The church age has lot many great things under that great word called as mystery, mysterion, being hidden in the past but now being made known to the sect of the people of Christ in this church age. And what you are, do you know? You are a heavenly citizen. What you are, do you know? You are having the player of Paltimore privileges. What do you have, do you know? You are, can trample Satan under your feet. That's the power given to you. And what do you know you are? You are being involved by the Trinity. You have been given the completed can of scripture. You have been given for you to be a great witness to the Lord by becoming a great ambassador and becoming a great missionary. And do you know what you are? In the church age, you can become a great disciple of the word of the Lord of a God. Entering into the kingdom of Christ, he says in Matthew 13, 52, as a disciple, as an instructed one in the KJV. But in the Greek, it says, Matatias. You enter there as a disciple and you graduate and you become Grammatia the New Testament theologian and the New Testament meant to say combination of the world and new together that's the kingdom of my Christ he want every believer to be like Christ because the creation is awaiting for the manifestation of the adult sons he says in Romans 8 and creation is literally awaiting for the manifestation and in the Greek it meant to say it's with a great groaning of a pain in Romans 8 16 through 18 it's a, it stands and who they are, they are the adult sons. And now to begin there, he says in John 1 12, whosoever believes upon Christ to them, he gave the power to become the sons of God. It's not the exclusive authority of Satan which challenged to give to my Christ, the cheap one. What did Christ of Lord our God said? Get thee out, Satan, whom you think you want to be deserved. The present Christendom people are entrusted in crowns rather than first facing the cross. They want to have first the crown. The people in the present Christendom are training you up in those terms, dear brother, and wake up. The same great thing what Satan challenged my Christ and said, just bow down to me. Why do you want to go to cross and purchase these people? Yet Lord God comes up with a plan in the church age and he makes something great for us in the church age. And you know what does he say? Yes, I will take this world. I will take this world in the terms of discipleship program. And he wants everyone to be made disciples in Matthew 28 verses 18 through 20. And he has given the power to every church age believer, the ordinary believer to be great and extraordinary through the word of the Lord of God in the power of Lord God the Holy Spirit and he wants to take this world and the world to be taken only through the program of discipleship and that's what he has planned for us the Satan could tempt the Satan could say in a mocking manner to that I will give you the world come and bow down to me and worship 
Lord God goes through the cross and comes now with the great power given to every believer the great exusia authority while he was on this earth he gave to the disciples in Luke 9 verses 1 through 4 but now for the church age he says one hour we pray the heavenly prayer of Matthew chapter 6 thine O Lord is the kingdom it's not the kingdom of Satan it's the kingdom of my Christ Thine Lord is the power. What is that power? Do not miss. It's not exuse your authority. What Satan could think it can give. And thine alone, O Lord, is the doxa and glory and honor. Doxa and time. And Satan comes to give you the glory of this world. What bastard can give to you? It can give to you these false pastor teachers. The false pastor teachers who love to give you prosperity gospel. The false pastor teachers who are not even worthy to be called as pastors to take their name upon our tongue. Because they fail to teach every day. But the word of the Lord of our God and the attribute of the Lord of our God, he says in Jephna 3, 5, without fail, he comes to teach the word every day, every day, every day. And that's the great divine principle right from the beginning. When he created our federal head parents, Adam and Eve, he knew very well to teach us that man does not live by bread alone but by every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord our God. He knew very well to teach us that great principle. Zephaniah 7, Zephaniah 3 and again Job 7 verses 17 and 18 he says movement by movement is going to examine you long back. How is going to examine us movement by movement. He said this when you can find the great archaic Hebrew in the terms pertaining to Genesis and Job long back. If you can ever have a discourse or a debate or a scholarly level of debate pertaining to Job when it was been written, you will find the same style of the Hebrew language between Genesis and Ex Genesis and Job. They find the same thing. They come to the same origin. And when did he say that? Long back in Job 7, 17 and 18. Moment by moment. Rega bakan, the word in the Hebrew. Moment by moment he want to examine you. And he writes the same thing even for us in 2 Corinthians 10. Getting every thought into captivity for Christ. If your thinking is not in accord with the word of the Lord of God, your thinking goes vain. How can you get every thought into captivity for Christ if you don't have the word of the Lord of God? If you don't know the purpose why Lord God has kept you alive on this earth, even after salvation, by faith alone, in Christ alone. It is to confirm you knew the image of his dear beloved son. That's what he says in Romans 8, 28 through 32 to the point to teach to us. We are predestined to confirm to the image of his dear beloved son because of his great pro Guinnessco and pro horizon knowledge of my Christ. That's what he has planned. And then he comes to teach for us in Ephesians 4 the bona fide gift of the pastor teacher given to you so that every believer could be made to become like the stature of my Christ according to the complete stature of my Christ. And that's not possible if you're not taking in the word of the Lord of a God. And that's not possible if you're always grieving and squelching and waxing Lord God the Holy Spirit in you. And provoking Lord God the Holy Spirit to be put to test. But rather that's only possible when you're all the time in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit. Using the powers of your priesthood to rebound. 1 John 1 9 is not a license to sin. It is a license to come back and serve the Lord of a God in this great intensified stage of the angelic conflict. And in the present Christendom of this 21st century where you are finding many outlets of grass to be grown rather than proper crop to be produced in that field and you know why is it there is no proper caretaker that's why in my field it came along many grass rather than the crop though you can find little crops it is a crop that the put was a green chili over here they can find some of the trees over here. Very, very small trees. And why it didn't grow up? No proper caretaker. And what the result was? Grass came along. Even in the present Christendom, Lord God says for us the parable of wheat and tares. How will the tares come? How will the false pastor teachers come? They haven't been sent by the Lord of our God, he says in Jeremiah as well as in Ezekiel, to learn for us great many lessons from the word. I haven't sent them, yet they ran, he says. 
Why? Because they want to destroy the Lord's flock. And Satan knows very well. If you as a believer in the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ could produce the Tamim nature before the Lord. And Satan knows very well. When you're proving your Tamim nature in your flesh, then certainly, Satan knows very well your flesh activities of your sin nature, what you are in the flesh, if it is far more superior, then Satan could be judged, Satan could be trampled, Satan could be proven to say, though out of this same flesh, the same mud, the same carnal man, the man who now got renovated, regenerated in the word of the Lord of a God, the same man now he says he's an enemy to the flesh, putting to death his flesh, the same man he through his inner mind in the power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit operating in him, is witnessing the truth and has become a true disciple of me and in return he has become a grammatious like the master. Satan knows very well such products are more weighty and powerful then the way how Satan could be there defending the Lord's essence in his presence before its fall. And thus every believer, though who has been there of the same old sin nature, Lord God has planned for us to get your standards of metamorphomai, complete transformation from your inward renovation of thinking, inward, not just outward appearance, inward. Satan comes to transform itself into the angel of light or the false apostles what we read in 2nd Corinthians chapter 11 the point is Satan comes in metaschematis zoans what they are they appear only outward but inward they are not yet transformed what they are they are still the liars they are still the deceivers they are still working out the common things like Miano human excreta Whatsoever was benefit to Apostle Paul, what does he call them? He calls them, I count them as human excreta. Even that human excreta could be used as a fuel, Ezekiel 3 says for us. If Ezekiel wouldn't been interpreted to the Lord of a God or interrupted, not interpreted, interrupted before the Lord of a God. And if, would have said, if he wouldn't have said to the Lord, Lord, I haven't defiled myself from my youth. Lord God wouldn't have given him to cook his food with cow dung. You would have called him to use human excreta as a fuel. Apostle Paul says, Whatsoever I achieved, I achieved them as an human excreta. There's nothing worth in it. And we should be more refusing than that human excreta to say, The good deeds what we are doing, if it is not in accord with the word of the Lord of our God, it's worse than human excreta. The programs what you're running in your church, if it is not in accord with the word of the Lord of God, that's more worse than that human excreta. If you as a pastor teacher do not know the right work of you, and if you call yourself to become reverends or right reverends or reverends, reverends and doctorates, it could be more worse than that human excreta. You're not even fit or worth enough to take your human excreta to be as a fuel, more worse than that it is. Anything or anyone let, however great he may be, or however weak he may be, or however strong he may be, or however small he may be. Every knee shall bow before the presence of Lord God the Father, he said, and he sweareth it seven times. And he calls for us in Isaiah 46, 5, whom you will liken me, Dhamma, you, you will make me to be represented or equal to God the Father, that's Shava. And then he calls for us, who you can think like Lord God the Holy Spirit could be represented, Mashal. And then he says in Isaiah 46, 5, whom you will liken us. Dhamma, Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ, Shava, Lord God the Father, Mashal, Lord God the Holy Spirit, whom you will liken him. No one, dear brethren, except the Holy, Holy, Holy One. The Holy One, what we have been given the privilege to be indwelt, what we have been given the privilege to be taking number one priority in the word of the Lord of our God, what we have been given that we really don't deserve, yet Lord God has given us much more than the boss to stand as a witness for his truth, and yet you want to produce a new human excreta. 
and you call human excrete standards only are required in our pulpits if there you if you are not a reverend you cannot come and preach that's what the standards of human excreta they are who made reverends holy and reverend is my lord god the father in heaven and belonging to that trinity alone the legitimate title given for us is pastor teacher let's be content with the title the people are not interested to look upon the work following with this title thus they have changed it into something called as ravadas and they don't teach the word today or tomorrow dear brethren when you stand in the presence of lord god the father you need to tremble you need to pay for spoiling the lord's beauty of his wife you will pay when you're not making every believer perfect and complete in Colossians 1 28 teaching warning everyone wisdom what does he say the word wisdom wisdom proper isogogics categories and exegesis wisdom word upon word line upon line precept upon precept wisdom iota upon iota carrera upon carrera wisdom is the word of the lord of a god which has to be instilled in you not the church programs what they're practicing today in our pulpits And the flock is happy to find cheap substitutes. Don't worry. Now you may be happy to count your pastor. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Counting about him, dancing about him, jumping about him, looking upon the face of their experience itself. We can say they how the way they could think they could be worthy enough to be called as pastors. Their appearance, their style. Living out goatee. Wearing dresses with tattoos. They have the tattoos on their skin. And yet they want to wear dresses to expose those tattoos. What the Bible says in Deuteronomy. You cannot have tattoo upon your flesh. And yet this tattoo oriented man will be for your pastor. And you will find this man. And in my country India following the same western culture. This idiotic morons being wife and husband as pastor for them. They love to kiss and make sex on the road. And they want to give an example saying to the point. We are pastors and why will not the flock also follow the same terms. And this is what they are performing. And they end up, and they end up in the name called as regen. Once again they want a regeneration. That's the program what they're running over here in my country India depending upon that western culture. And yet many people are loving such lies. They want to grow up in that grass. And what a great shame it is. A man who is having tattoos has become a pastor. A man is having the way of his hippie style. A man shall not go grow up long hair, said the word. Yet they want to grow up long hair. And they want to become as a music rocks. <laughs> what a sheer rat it is. And being the client nation to my Lord, if they don't form the pivot, if they don't come up a solid base to daily teach the word of the Lord of a God, the wrath of the Lord of a God would abide upon them. Upon the children of disobedience it's still working out, he says in Ephesians 2, 2. And for that extension, how they go, do you know, dear brethren? It's all beginning in their thoughts. It's all beginning in their thinking. Therefore, we find in Ephesians 2, 3, among whom also we had our conversation in times past in the lusts of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh, also the desires of the mind. This is what their fate is. They love to give you the desires of your flesh. They love to take the desires of the lust. And this is what they are. The children of disobedience, the children of apathias, the children of hard heart and stubborn mind. Therefore, Jeremiah 20, chapter 7, verses 23 and following, he says, Don't rebel like your fathers, but the children have done more worse than their fathers. They become more stiff-necked, they become more hard-hearted. The same thing what we look. Satan comes up with such plans for you to give you that which is easy, that which is simple. And you can find... Whether these people are belonging to Christ or not by the fruit, what they do, said the Lord. And the word of the Lord of God says you cannot make black, white, white, black. They love to come up with their makeup. 
then itself we can find up to what extent these fools they are. And the church congregation doesn't even know. If this is a man who is able to go against the word of the Lord of God in that simple point, in that simple title or in that simple job, why will he not break, break major things? Doesn't the same word say for us in Matthew 5, the one who even not let go the single jot or tittle and the one who practices the same thing what is teaching is great in the kingdom of heaven. Even not to let go the small thing. But how many break, how many great things you're breaking up? Making discipleship, you haven't had that idea at least. Preaching the gospel, sending them to reach the outreach. The unreached, you have failed by a simple act of faith. And that's what you do. You go up into missionaries, you go up into making great money. That's the desire of your flesh fulfilling the desires of your flesh, fulfilling the desires of your mind. Looking in the terms of the present Christendom, the way how Jeremiah was been called rightly, a man of courage and a weeping prophet. The present status quo, we need to turn out to become like a statesman of Isaiah with uncompromising principle with Elijah. Do you know why we have to be with, that, with such great uncompromising principle? Cut them off, says the word. Romans 16, 17, anyone who doesn't follow this rule, depart from them, cut them out. Don't be in that company, don't be in that standards. And you may say you are cursing pastors, who cares if they are really pastors, they would not be hurt. They are ravenous wolves. Therefore, they are not pastors to the church, neither to the flock of my Lord. Even during the time of Elijah, they were false Baal prophets. They were false Asherah prophets. What did Elijah do? The one man of the Lord of a God. One man versus 850. What did he do? He killed them out. We are not just cursing out. We are encouraging you to look your faith in the word of the Lord of a God. Don't keep silly issues in your mind. Thinking that this man is like a great one of the angel of the Lord of Ezekiel 23 verses 20 and 22. Don't think he's not such kind of a great rank. If he were so, he would be concerned about the flock of the Lord. If he were so, he would look every man to be produced before the presence of Lord God the Father to be perfect and complete because of the great work in said for us in 1 Corinthians 2, 6 and 7 when he teaches to us very specifically we communicate this doctrine among them that they're perfect, that they're mature. Already you have given the terms pertaining to be the kinekatesis. Already you have been made your temple to be the temple of the Lord of God, of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. When you have been given much and expected much, spiritual IQ doesn't belong to the standards of human IQ. You come in the spiritual IQ by rebound and the feeling of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, and you train them out to become every believer to be perfect and complete if you were truly of those terms of the angel of the Lord. But you don't do so. Why? You love. To find grass in your church. That's why. The grass which grows without any attention. The tears what we can call. And in the present Christendom. Tears, tears, tears are sown at every nick and corner. And what the tears do, do you know dear brethren? They have the lusts of the flesh to be fulfilled. And the desires of their mind as well to be fulfilled along the flesh. And they love not to be content. That's a great pain for them. They love not never to be content in the word of the Lord of a God. What the way they are. Thus he says for us. In Revolution 21 in verse number 27. These things are most important for us to learn. He teaches to us dear brethren very specifically. The people who are being common. Koinonon. Who are these people who are being common? These are the people who have made themselves as Shirat. The word to be used more specific, Miano, which is nothing but human excreta. That's what it is. And the word of the Lord of God says, for us to look up to what extent these human excretas have been there in our pulpits. Thus we need to look, he says, for us, dear brethren, anything that he is making or contaminating to pollute, to defile, to make it as a common term. And what extent they are standing before you to be common? They are standing before you to be common by defiling the Lord's duty upon your life, 
because they love to take the glory of this world in their life they think they are really glorifying God the Father by the standards of their ignorance and arrogance no not at all they are thinking they are pleasing God the Father but in return these are pleasers of men Galatians 1 10 Apostle Paul says if I would be here to please men I wouldn't be the bond slave of my Lord but the word says wake up if you don't wake up to look what the word says never you will come back to be the bond slave of the Lord the word of the Lord our God says every day every day every day without fail he comes moment by moment he examines he says in Job 7 that too long back when he was been reading the book of Genesis when he's writing for us those terms then why is it we are not able to get every thought into captivity for Christ the simple reason is that you haven't loved my Lord my rock my God to honor him above his word you haven't loved you are just showing forth your wolf nature covered under sheep and at what extent you want to attend the church sweet sugar coated preaching you want you want to be in a standards where you think you could be pleased by having you to be daubed with untempered mortar dear brother how many days more? How many days more you want to be away and not to be the bond slave of my Christ? How many days more? Moment by moment you are grieving and squelching and waxing and dying sin unto death. Lord God, the Holy Spirit, you grieve, you squelch, you wax and you put to test and you are going to die sin unto death. The same thing what we find in Acts chapter 5. A nine nine sapphira the way how they were if they would be really in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit they would be under the controlling mentoring ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit there wouldn't be such death and people in the present Christendom are coming to serve the tables and what did the Apostles say in sixth chapter of third verse in Acts we shall appoint other men for this business. It is not ours. The right duty of the pastor teacher is what in the present Christendom to make every believer perfect and complete. For that cause he has given us minimum 100 years, 33 to thrice. We need to calculate our life on this earth. That's what Apostle Paul says. Till I could finish this work, I would abide immortal on this earth. So that your joy could be further in the glory of my Christ. We need to survive minimum 100 years. That's the plan of my Lord for every believer. Because to take Genesis 1, 1 to Revelation 20 to 21, minimum 60 years it takes to complete word upon word. Minimum. And that time is also not available for us. Because even 60 years is not enough. It will be taking greater time. And yet you are working out that which is common. You are making out that which is abomination. Already being abominated, that's what you may say. Because the church has already been filled with such lies. But with Lord God, nothing shall be impossible. Therefore, he says, the earth is full of the kindness of the glory of the Lord. We have read the cult of an example. We have read the housetop as an example. And when we have been given... Already if we can think the church is into a Christless apostasy Christendom, we can come back, we can once again put, when we are readily available to say, Lord, here I am, send me to do the will of thy work. If we are faithfully prepared and faithfully preparing day by day, it is the Lord our God who can make upside down because heaven and the earth belongs to the Lord and all authority is it is in his hand. Who it is that who can stop us? If Lord God be with us when the doors have been opened for us. In spite of remembering and thinking, such and such are the reasons, such and such we cannot go. There is a fear for us, there is this, there is that. Clear those mental cobwebs from your mind. The battle belongs to the Lord. Remember the example of David, the way have you fought. 
if the battle belongs to the lord of a god then why we are here let the world remember us that we break the rules of these taboos what this man have made and call them as the limit their limits in their thinking we have been given the entire authority in the in the earth to go and make disciples because of the authority from the power of the lord of a god because there is no substitute for such great victory when we find in christ we are in a war of an angelic conflict we cannot find substitute for our victory it's your shirat of concepts of thinking that has made for you not to win in this angelic conflict not to make disciples when you haven't made yourself disciple to the word of the lord of a god battle belongs to the lord and there is no substitute for victory thus making every believer perfect and complete in the presence of lord god the father through this mystery epistles and in the power given to us in the completed canon of scripture we can make great things and age may wrinkle your body dear brethren but quitting from this angelic conflict and not fighting the battle of the lord of a god wrinkles your soul and we have to advance and if we don't advance and if we don't enter with a will to win then that's a very great fatal error and dear brethren we have a lot of opportunity on this earth to perform the will of lord god the father we have lot 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 of opportunity because heaven and the earth belongs to the lord and the king's heart is in the hands of the lord we have lot of opportunity to achieve and yet why do you want to make that which is common and perish like a common man your rank your position in christ is something great and very very unique and very very different and yet why do you want to make up your life as lies and refuge it out under lies and the one the second category the one being and about the one being a common one that's me i know and the one making abomination and falsehood the way have this false pastor teachers have entered second peter 1 1 through 4 second peter 2 verses 1 through 4 and then what they're making into abomination what it has to be the temple of the living lord of a god what they have made they have made it to be the synagogue of satan and why it has been called synagogue of satan where there is no proper revolution where there is no proper exposition of the word of the lord of a god there the people will perish and when there is no proper word absolutely your thinking will become ruined and when your thinking has become ruined and it has become empty you will be filled up with not just and worship of devil but it will become devil's palace and why is it the devil's palace no word the entrance of the word giveth me light said the psalmist and to be happy you need to walk according to the terms of bible doctrine says the word and happy are the tamim who are the way they are walking in the law of the lord of a god says psalm 119 verse 1 and yet you don't prove your tamim nature you don't look upon the standards of the word and what you do and what you look you go to seek and search your happiness in the cheap substitutes of this human affairs and the people who are working out such traps the people who are still looking upon such snares the people who are still working out to become karams in the sight of the lord lord god help them on this earth even at the judgment seat of christ and the people who are dying wickedly the people who are dying foolishly without knowing even the will of lord god the father to perform the word of the lord of our god says why is it you want to die before your prescribed time and more bitter than death the man who's living according to the world and not according to the word of the lord of a god that's more bitter that's more mara that's more pain 
because as Hosea says my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge my people are destroyed for not knowing the right word my people are destroyed for not having the right exposition of truth and Lord's hand is not short in providing for you those bona fide gifted male spiritual pastor teachers in every era of this earth in every generation of this earth Lord God hands is not short they're all the time ready to provide you with great information they're all the time ready to give you what is right and perfect in the sight of the Lord of a God to the highest they're always ready to give you that which is right and perfect and complete in the will of the Lord they're always ready as Moses till he could take up his decision to go and see he was not called so you to be to your life as Queen of Sheba came along a great journey to look if she wouldn't have come she wouldn't have said what I heard and what I have seen what I have been made known through this man while I was still back at my kingdom they were only half but I came over here I found great many things than this if she wouldn't come she wouldn't have known if Moses wouldn't come he wouldn't have been called likewise even if you don't come back and look and dig what is your purpose in life in the word of the Lord of a God as per the word of the Lord of a God or as the demands of the word of the Lord of a God that's what it is wake up Akribos look upon the demands of the word of the Lord of a God and do that which is right he says in Ephesians 5 and if you don't make up your life according to those standards your life has no meaning, no purpose at all, dear brother. Though you may be anyone on this earth, American president or Indian prime minister, who cares? Because what God says for us, those who honor me, I will honor them. And we being the trembled one at his presence, the fear of his word and making up our lives according to his glory, we should honor Lord God, Lord God because He is the King Eternal and He says make disciples when we are disciples not doing that work what respect you can take on this earth what will go back to home and say to God the Father at least if you haven't made disciples at least you be a disciple when you are a disciple you will look the burden you will look the procedure you will understand why Lord God should take every member of this world and be a disciple for the cheap taunt of Satan the way how it said go down to me and I will give you this world the glory of this world the wicked one of this world and that God says get thee out and he gave that power to us now to make every disciple and win for Christ everyone to the Lord by making our lives as a living sacrifice to Lord God the Father in heaven and you know what dear brethren when you're playing football, the opposite team for you will not allow so easily to hit the goal. Remember all the time this game. Satan and its angels will not allow you to come back and take the word because it's all the time giving you pleasures, cheap substitutes with false and fake pastor teachers who are not even worthy enough to be taken their name upon our tongues. You have been surrounded with gimmicks, you have been surrounded with games, you have been surrounded with programs, you have been surrounded with every way what looks in the sight of the Lord of a God as a shirat. Therefore in Job 6.13 we read, or 6.10 we read, or 6.7 I think, My soul, even which it hated to touch, that has become my food, he says. And what does it hate to touch? Menstrual sickness. That menstrual meat has become my meat, he says. Is that required for you? Yet you may think you are living. Are you really living in the word of the Lord of a God? Or are you still though living are counted death? A dead one in the sight of Christ. At least like the prodigal son, wake up and come back and do the will of Lord God the Father in heaven. Do not be traitors. 
Look what the word says. Look what the Bible says. Look what the teaching will be in exegeomai. Look what the principle will be in isogogics. Look what the great exegetical categorical thought will be. Look what the Bible mandates day by day, day by day, word upon word, line upon line, precept upon precept, morning and evening to make up your time, to give the tithe of your time. Look what it says for you in every day of your life. Don't be blind. Don't be arrogant. Don't be ignorant. Wake up! Don't count the men who are coming to you. You are accountable for their life in the presence of Christ. Because everyone you have to present perfect and complete in the presence of Lord God the Father. And if you are not doing that will and the work of the Lord, you will be held for rent. Don't think one lakh people are coming to a church and you're happy with their offerings. No! In that every one should be presented before Lord God the Father to the perfection. And making them perfection, how much of a serious plan it has to be for you to reach from spiritual self-esteem to spiritual autonomy and then becoming spiritual maturity in Christ. What a great serious plan you will have in the Lord. Remember that. And yet, you love more. How hardened are your hearts, like the more hardened nature of Pharaoh. Giving an example for us how hardened a man can make his heart. Lord God help you, whether you come or not, we are not worried. Whether you listen to this or not, we are not worried. We all will stand at the judgment seat of Christ and that day we need to answer what you do with the grace that has been given to you. And if you did not have this bona fide gift of the pastor teacher, why you entered my flock just for the sake of your belly? And it would be better for you to send your wives to other men and sleep with them and earn money like a prostitution or to make money like prostitution rather than coming to the flock of my God for the survival of your belly. That will be more honorable than this. If you don't have the bona fide gift of the pastor teacher, though you have the bona fide gift and not performing the will of Lord God the Father in daily teaching the word of the Lord of our God as well. Remember Jeremiah 8, 10 through 12, what does he say for us? Your wives will be sent to other men because you have polluted my word. And that's live example for many men. And we can find that even in my country India, the department of Karnataka where we stay. Man pastor for AG Assembly Church, his wife eloped with the management committee. And what they follow, the Pentecostal doctrines they follow. And they think because that pastor was busy in his schedule, he sent and the management got cross linked, the last full cross link to say the word. And at now they're becoming famous. That's how Satan prospers them. It's not by the word of the Lord of a God they have been prospered. Because the word says, teach them the right gospel and make disciples. And these people are polluting the great commands of the Lord of a God. Thus they will pay right now on this earth. Will it not be a shame for the pastor? When you are doing your work perfectly to the Lord of a God, why will he give you the yoke of iron upon your head? Because of your sins, Jeremiah came to show forth the yoke of wood. Long back, he says in Leviticus 27 as well as in Deuteronomy 28, if you don't obey the word of the Lord of God, you will have yoke of iron upon your head. And you're happy for that to receive. No problem. Because you think the journey of your life on this earth Maybe 60 years or 70 years or in fact indeed when the pastor teacher is also saying to the point suddenly he can die with a heart attack though he was of a young one and all these things you know they claim their clauses. So how many days we live? Let me live under this disguise of a wolf and make money and make security to my family so that even at least they can enjoy even after my departure. <laughs> that will be a curse for them. When you don't honor the Lord's word, no matter however great wealth you might have done, that will be a curse. That is the cost of grieving and squelching and waxing Lord God, the Holy Spirit, and your will to wealth. And that will not stand. That will be a curse. Better to live a life. Though the people may not recognize, but to be faithful enough to honor Lord's word. 
and dying poor that will be great rather than making rich by dishonoring the Lord's word. The word of the Lord our God says, the righteous one will perish in his righteousness, but the wicked one will prolong his days in wickedness. And that wickedness, what is prolonging, he says, will be with many, many sorrows. Physical pain, mental pain, spiritual pain. But the one who is perishing in righteousness, he knew very well, today if I live, I live for Christ. If I die, I am profitable. I go back to the Lord of a God. And he would ask to let God the Father, till your work could be done on this earth, make me to be immortal, O Lord. And when the work has been finished, O Lord, take me out. Don't want to stay in the world which has been polluted with hypocritical masks of brothers who love to dishonor thy word for the filthy liquor of lusts. If they truly fear the Lord of a God, they would come back to repentance, but we know very well they don't truly fear the Lord. They fear wealth, they fear name, they fear fame. And they fear to take money. Because if they lose money, they can't survive. It's all the business of money that they're entering now with such a mask of churches. They don't know they came to serve freely. The power and the wisdom and the gift given to us is to serve you freely. Our needs, Lord God would take care of it. But on the contrary, they have come now to serve in the disguise of a pastor teacher to make their life as luxurious ones. These idiotic morons could not even know the money given to the church is to develop the missionaries and send forth and support those missionaries through the church. But these people are happy to take that money and support their belly and make up their living style which is quite Contrary to the word of the Lord of our God, when he says in Mark 6, 8 and 9, you shall not carry your begging bags, you shall not carry this, you shall not carry that, wherever you go you abide there till the work of the Lord of our God has been finished, you shall carry one gospel feet of sandals, and then he says, one dress, one coat, the coat of the righteousness of the Lord, but where they are standing now, they don't look upon this word any longer. They want to carry their begging bags to raise the money and put in those begging bags like Judas Iscariot and dies in unto that. How will be these people as disciples of the Lord or the commissioned ones of the Lord? Do you know what above all? They want to start up the churches for boy crazy, girl crazy, for marriage matrimonies. <laughs> and not inculcating them the right word. Be careful about these wolves, dear brethren. Life has been filled at every nick and corner by agents of Satan. The only guide for you in spiritual warfare to take a large shield of faith through the word of the Lord of God and each and every fiery dart of Satan, what it is going to fire upon you, no matter it may be arrow, but now it is missiles or launch of missiles. With a large shield of faith, you know very well what the word says, though you may strive and strive for cross, be happy that you're walking in cross rather than taking crown without cross. Godliness is all about, he says in 2 Timothy 3 12, those who suffer persecution for Christ. And what is that persecution or suffering? Learning the word. For that, kneel down in presence of the Lord and ask God the Father to guide you through that word. And that if you don't love to take these things, we are not worried. Because we are not answerable to you. We are answerable to Lord God the Father. Our duty is to blow the trumpet, whether you hear or phobia. And we are crying out and blowing the trumpet. The one who has a ear, let him hear, said the church. Or said to the church by the Spirit. And do you have really your ears? Look where you stand. Think about this issues, dear brethren. We shall come back and continue tomorrow in the same divine presence of Lord God the Father as He leads us to His glory. With our head bowed and eyes closed, the closing moments have been dedicated to those who are here without Christ, without hope, and without eternal life. In order of returning to Lord God the Father, that you believe upon my Christ, my Lord, my Rock, my Savior, that is the moment itself. You shall have this eternal truth. This eternal truth for us is very simple. Believing Christ, you shall be saved. Whereas for the believer, the greatest merit is to grow up in grace and the knowledge of Bible doctrine. Wherewith you shall learn to acquire to possess to know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. 
and for the pastor teacher, the greatest merit is to carry Sothan Lagan. Herald the word in season and out of season because the Diamatrima witnesses where they have been called. The number one Diamatrima witnesses in Rolling Trinity followed by Babylon in our hands. And number two Diamatrima witnesses are hearers. If there are no hearers, dear brother, do not worry with such nature. The entire Anjali Coast will be witnesses. And what is our work? Our work is to rightly divide the word of the Lord of our God no matter however the chips may fall. So which way you want to go, dear brother, and you decide. That's your life. We are not forcing anyone, but rather we are blowing our trumpet. And if you are of the Lord of our God, as John 8, 47 teaches to us, you shall listen to this truth, and the truth shall set you free. If you have been sent by the Lord of our God, you will listen for this. And if you are not, let Lord God help you to be so, to come back and to listen to the word. We shall come back and continue tomorrow. Infinitely divine Holy Father, what a great and unique privilege it is for us to learn from Revelation 21, 27, O Lord. Already the one who are into the status quo of Miano, polluting, defiling, and making it common, O Lord, they have entered into the pulpits. Yet, O Lord, you have given the remnant to be saved, the remnant which they would walk faithfully in the presence of Revelation 2 and 3 chapters. Those that would overcome by holding fast to the first love, those that would overcome make by making this temple to be the temple of the living Lord alone and not even to close enough to bow down to become as a synagogue of Satan. At O Lord, in the present Christendom, many Ravenous wolves have already entered. You know it very well, O Lord, the Antichrist, the one who is against the word of the Lord of our God. Yet they think they have achieved great things in their life, O Father. You know very well what they are and who they are. At O Lord, the sincere care of this flock which have given to our hearts through the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, under the bona fide gift of the pastor, teacher, O Lord, with like-minded men who are teaching the word day and night, every day in thy presence to stand, to be perfect and complete and not to be ashamed when we come back home and making every believer to be the disciple and taking thy kingdom back by making disciples of all this earth as you have said though satan came with a challenging task to say bow down to me i shall give you before the cross this crown yet O lord you received the cross and then the crown rejecting satan and said as a 46 5 the principal base of that in comparison with nahum 1 1 through 7 that the earth shall melt before his presence of great glory and the wicked in no way you shall acquit them he said so father keeping those principles in our mind we walk in the power of lord god the holy spirit yes by making disciples O lord and in return making disciples of all the nations to fulfill thy great commission in matthew 28 verses 18 through 20. to such extension O lord with man it is impossible but with lord god all things are possible father in the power of lord god the holy spirit help us to train these people according to the word and father give us that great vigor valor and strength in the power of Lord God the Holy Spirit to seal thy word among thy disciples because thou alone have to be feared thou alone is our dread thou alone is our terror so father honoring and trembling in thy word in the presence we pray searching our hearts diligently strengthen us day by day though they may rebel though they may attract though they may take it though they may refuse it to teach the word as thy divine principle to be witness only for you and for the word on this earth and not for men. In Christ's much less peerless gracious name we pray, Father. May Lord God the Holy Spirit enlighten and challenge us by this message. Amen. <laughs>